All right, this is SF Barcast. I am Jeff Cleary. I am Andrew Louder. Andrew, where are we today? We are at the SF Eagle. The SF Eagle in South of Market. That's right. Sounds like it would be like a um, like a proud American bar, and it, and it is. Yeah, if you've never heard of it before, and you are a very Republican, uh, a patriotic <laughs> exactly. family, you'll just be right at home. Don't even listen to the rest of this podcast. <laughs> just head down here right, right. now. Make and a beeline. It, Put on your best. Uh, I don't know. If you got a leather vest, it would probably be nice. <laughs> <laughs> and enjoy it. <laughs> okay. Um, it's in South of Market, but you know, like South of Market's such a like an all encompassing yeah, sort of like neighborhood because you could say. South of Market is like down by the bay, right? And also South well, of Market sort of is down the, here by the in mission. the zone between. Like, I mean, it's it doesn't feel like like uh, Soma proper, like because it's sort of like, like that zone between like the Mission and Soma, where like uh, yeah, DNA it's, is. It's and in butter the buffer zone. Yeah, yeah, it's like DNA's right over here. Yeah, so, so it's, like it's sort of like the club district. Almost. Where is it exactly? It's it's twelfth and twelfth and Harrison. Is that right? Harrison, correct. Yeah. Yes, we should know. We 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 we're here. Yeah, <laughs> we should we're really not, be able seriously. to like open our eyes and look at street signs. We're not doing this in the in Andrew's backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Neither one of us are blind, just like Stevie Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bumami Jones. <laughs> um, yeah, and we uh, we haven't had done a podcast in a little while. I think there was yeah. a little like issues we had uh, where I was traveling. You were, you were busy losing money. I was, here's the thing. I really wanted to get a park podcast in before I went to Vegas because mm. it was right before the tournament, which we'll get to in right. segment two. And right before St. Patrick's Day. And right before St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. And, in fact, I got in, I got interviewed um, by someone from Broke Ass Stewart mm. who wrote a article about the best Irish bars in San Francisco as right. a St. Patrick's Day, day, like, you know, prelim, like, you know, ramping up to St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. And when she was interviewing me, I had to, like, come right out front and just say, look, i got to let you know, I have, like, a hate-hate relationship with St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> right. It's like, everybody knows it's, like, the amateur hour. And, right. and she's like, oh, I used to work in a Irish bar. And I was like, did you enjoy cleaning up green puke? <laughs> I don't know. Would that be like? Would, would that be better or worse than cleaning up regular puke? Because like, if, at least if it's green, you can sort of like pretend you're on like a alien planet <laughs> as a being a janitor. Yeah, you're always looking on the bright side, Andrew. <laughs> uh, but like, yeah, I didn't. Did you go out for St. Patrick's Day? Oh hell no. No, in fact, like I, I think one of the reasons we couldn't get a, a, a show in was because like uh, uh, my uh, my uh, Columbia back injury was still uh, lingering and like uh, slowly turning into. Uh, uh, gum and tooth pain, so you know, like that's, wow. so that's what's going on with me. You're oh. wasting away. <laughs> I know, yeah, like, at like 45, my my body's just like, yeah, that's about enough. <laughs> uh, like we didn't think we'd live this long, so we didn't have a backup. Oh, thanks, man. Oh, cool. Thanks. I was in Las Vegas for uh, St. Patrick's Day, and um, the you know, this is like walking around Fremont Street in downtown Vegas, and it's right. just like, oh my god, like everybody's just lit. And like that, this was, the, this was the problem. I was like telling uh, the girl from uh, Broke Ass Stewart that I was just like, I just can't handle it. Like, I don't want to <laughs> fight. I don't want to fight that fight. You know, right, right. Like when you're younger, you're kind of like, yeah, it's St. Patrick's Day. This is I'm gonna I'm gonna be the star of this movie. Right. And you go out and you get drunk and you fall down. And you have to tell a story about it. Like when at this late age in my life, I'm just <laughs> like, I want to avoid that like the fucking plague. Well, there's something about like, I mean. You sort of need, like, you, you you need to have a period where you're not doing something before you celebrate doing it. Like, so, so, like, if you're, you know, if you're going out and getting like blasted on like St. Patrick's Day in Las Vegas, well, who cares? They do that every night of the week. Otherwise, well, that's, <laughs> so that's like, what do you? Well, what's the big special occasion like that you're celebrating by doing the same thing? I think I've said this before, but like, you know, my old company Zappos, they moved to Vegas and they wanted me to move to Vegas. Shout and out to Tony Shea. Tony, shout out to Tony Shea. Um, and the problem I have with Vegas is, like, besides, aside from everything, <laughs> my biggest problem is that, like, you know, sometimes, like, you go out and, like I said, like, you're like, hey, you want, I want I'm going to be the star of the movie. Tonight's the night. Me and my buddies, right. we're going to be the star of the movie. And sometimes you just want to be like, you know what? I just want to hang out. I want to yeah, be, be an extra. <laughs> I want to be like a supporting character or like an, even an extra. Like I want to like move my mouth but not actually be talking. <laughs> right, exactly. And, but the thing is in Vegas, 
since everybody's there to party, right. like you're just surrounded by people who are all trying to be the star of this movie. Yeah, yeah. And, you, and exactly. it's just like, oh my god, it's like, everyone's fucking bachelor party there, like all the time. Right, and so <laughs> it's just like that's gotta get, it's, like, it's oh. gotta get like tired. I mean, you get tired. I was there for like five days, and like I got tiresome for to, for me. Right. I was just like, hey, knock it off, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was. I, I can't believe like how often I see like, like you know, all of the like the world's like you know. The world's like greatest uh, superstar DJs and everything like that. Tiesto. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Well, they all go through like Las Vegas, and then they all like, but they all play like beach parties in the middle of the day at some hotel. Well, it's like what a terrible environment to see like you know Diplo or Dylan Francis or something like that at one o'clock while you're getting sunburned and like pushed around by frat guys. <laughs> exactly. Like, it's like, hey, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to listen to Diplo uh, while I'm like in the. Mandalay Bay wave pool. <laughs> right, getting sand kicked in my face. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, but, like, yeah, like, there, there's, like, this huge, like, poster on the side of one of the, like, the skyscrapers there. There's, like, a picture of Tiesto. <laughs> and just, like, this is the, only the number of people that would recognize that, like, has to be, like, less is, than one-tenth of one percent, right? This is the only right? place outside of the Mediterranean where anyone <laughs> right, knows what exactly. the, who that guy Everyone is. Everyone else is like, is that Yanni? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Dude, the other thing, like, those... All those, like, Vegas shows. I, I've never gone to a Vegas show. Have you? No, I don't think so. Like, uh, I'm trying to even remember if I've ever, ever had a chance, like, or, or even considered it. But, like, uh, didn't you? I thought you went and saw uh, Barry Manilow. In oh, that's right. I did. I saw oh, Barry so Manilow. Oh, like, caught you in a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> caught me in a lot. Like, that's, I mean, a bad Vegas show. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean, like, a life-changing experience. <laughs> right. I don't mean a fucking no-brainer, <laughs> like, like Manilow. <laughs> when, uh... uh yeah, and then the story with that, like, my dad tried to surprise me with Celine Dion tickets. Right. And uh, then she had to cancel because, like, like you, her health is deteriorating. <laughs> and But then, like, uh, later in that, like, trip, my dad said, hey, I'm, I'm going to get tickets to see Terry Fatter or <laughs> Terry Fator. Oh, yeah, like the sort of, like, third-rate Jeff Dunham. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but here's the thing. But probably ten times richer. Yeah, exactly. Here's the thing. <laughs> so if people don't know, Terry Fator... Is a he's a not to be confused with uh, t uh, Joey Fat One from uh, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> he he's a puppeteer right right and he supposedly he has the number one highest grossing like Vegas show <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a bunch great. of puppets yeah exactly <laughs> like well and he probably unseated Jeff Dunham <laughs> like you know who's like you know the yeah no. uh, uh, you know, the former uh, former number one puppeteer now, now they probably have some like huge. Uh, I mean, battle. Isn't it all sort of like location context? Like, we're at the SF Eagle now, and I was talking to the bartender, and later tonight they have an open mic, like oh, really? a comedy show here, which I didn't even know about. Right, right. Um, and it's a, it's a Wednesday, so Wednesday nights here they have yeah. uh, open mic comedy. And he said that they have, like, such a huge crowd that, like, you know, they have to, like, tell comics they can't, they can't perform. Now, if... If Terry Fator came in here with his <laughs> stupid puppets, like right. all of people in San Francisco would be like, "Hey, fuck you!" Right? You know, <laughs> get fist fucked to death after the yeah, show. Exactly. <laughs> I should mention that this is uh, probably one of the premier uh, leather bars. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> but it's like you, you take that same but you guy. You'd probably be fist fucked at any bar. <laughs> yeah. Well, you take that same guy out of this, out of here, out of off this stage, and put him in Vegas, and he's yeah, the yeah. number one grossing show in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what the fuck is going on? Actually, I have a, I have a story. Like, it is it's a leather bar in like south of Market. Right. In like, there's, and there's like a lot of them around here. A lot of like, um, yeah, you know, it's the it's, it's that client the clientele. It's like I mean, if there was a leather I was district, the I club would, district. I should have called it the uh, the leather district. Yeah, it's kind of like the leather district. Yeah. Um, but Folsom Street Fair usually uh, is goes right up the right street. Around the corner. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like, I have a story about this bar where. There was a uh, rumor that this bar was going to close, and uh, yeah, that was actually my first uh, when 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 I I saw that this place uh, was still around. Like I, my first thought was like, oh, I thought that closed, but I think it was because I probably read the same stories. But. Yeah, the um, basically, uh, although it's, it's weird because like I feel like like this like the last time this bar was like, okay, we're gonna they're gonna close, and they did like a fundraiser to keep it, or there was like this. You know, neighborhood mobilization to to sort of like preserve it. Right. Get it deemed a like, historical site or something. No, people do that now. Like they're yeah, trying, yeah, they're trying to do that with right. uh, Doc's Clock. Right, 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 right. I mean, that's just a weird thing. Like, okay, it's like the last sort of like ditch effort where it's like, 
Well, Maybe we can get the government to step in and like. I should uh, say that's not know. what they did here. Yeah, yeah. But uh, at Doc's Clock, like that's the, they're trying to they're trying to get like historical status for Doc's Clock in order to keep it there. Right. And the thing is, like, what, what's the argument there? It's like, so many people got drunk here. <laughs> it's like, thank you very much. <laughs> it's like, we have a list of celebrities that have had, uh, uh, like, really gross sex in that corner. <laughs> exactly. You're just like, so um, they, there was a rumor this place was going to close, and then I guess they mobilized, and they, they either raised enough money or whatever right. um, to uh, keep it here. And right. But I feel like, maybe not so much this place, but, like, I feel like there are some establishments in SF where... There's a lot of that, yeah, like you yeah. know, like the 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 Roxy Theater on 16th Street, like every like three or four years, they're just like we're gonna close unless we get a fundraiser, and then right. like there's a fundraiser, and they're like, oh, we're not gonna close. Thanks for the money. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, suckers. I mean, uh, patrons. <laughs> um, and actually, so one of my like my claim to fame story about this place is when the place was going supposedly going to close Uh uh, a friend of mine Parker Gibbs who's been on the show he um, he is friends with Steve Malkmus Mm -hmm. and uh, aren't we all and Malkmus is in town and uh, then he he, he was going to hang out with Malcolmus, and like, and he called me. He's like, "Hey, you want to hang out with Steve tonight?" And I was like, "Yeah, of course." I was like, "Where are you going to go?" He's like, "Where do you think we should go?" He like, shows like, up with some regular guy. He's like, "I didn't say which Steve." <laughs> and then this I was is, like, "Well, Steve he, Jones." I was like, "Well, supposedly the Eagle is going to close," and like, he's like, "Holy shit, we got to go to the Eagle." So like, me and Parker and so that's where you can get uh, <laughs> Steve Malcolmus to go to any bar you want. Yeah, it's so, to be like, hey, I heard that uh, Trader Sam's is going to close unless you buy us all drinks there. Yeah. <laughs> so me and Parker and uh, and Steve Malcolmus all came here. And you know, like Steve Malcolmus has a reputation as being kind of cantankerous. <laughs> Perhaps, yeah. Like, like, could not have been a nicer guy. That's terrible. Like, like, just, it, like, you don't want to meet your heroes and have them not live up to what you've heard about well, them. Well, there's right? the thing. It's like, everybody has those stories about how like they met their hero and the guy was a complete fucking asshole. And right. It's like... This is the opposite where it's like I heard that like Malcolmus is just like this like kind of mean dude, and he's just like the nicest dude in the world. In fact, like I think like Garcia and I gave him a fucking rash because right. we heard he was a big like sports fan. So we started. It was right before the World Cup, and so we started <laughs> grilling him on Belgium football. <laughs> we we started like grilling him on like sports right. and like you know then we it's like. I don't know, like Chris had like read that he he was into soccer, so it's like <laughs> so we started like asking him about soccer teams, you know, and no, it's just funny. like and we were right here in this little patio. He lives in Portland, right? So he's probably like a big Timbers fan, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's the uh, the indie rock ambassador for the Portland Timbers. Sean Farrelly, uh, friend of the show, said right. that uh, he um, he was at a bar in uh, in Portland where they were playing tri- bar trivia. Right. And Steve Malcolm was on the team, <laughs> and uh, Sean's uh, claim to fame is that he was just like, "Yeah, I beat him. I beat Steve Malcolm <laughs> at tri-. It's like, dude, like I mean, that's such a that's such a lower than participant trophy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like when, apart from that very moment like, when he was telling you that story, when when else does that come in like you know handy? Where like ah. people were like, "Yo, man, I bet T- Steve Malcolm is really smart." He's like, "I have evidence to prove otherwise." <laughs> well, he may be this international indie rock superstar, <laughs> but, but let me what? tell you something. He doesn't know every episode of The Simpsons. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> uh, anything else has been going on in the, the time we've been away, aside from the tournament, which we'll get to? I would say that, like, um, in, in relation to people being friendlier than you would think, um, and not that I that I uh, had any preconceived notions about, like, uh, what... This is the first time I've actually been in this place. Yeah. And, uh, um, and not, you know, not because I was uh, afraid to come in here or anything like that, <laughs> but... Uh, um, but uh, everyone uh, that works here has been, like, totally nice and, like, uh, you know, just, like, the nicest guys. <laughs> yeah, actually, when I came in, I was, like, had a conversation with the bartender about um, they have some good, like, T-shirts here. Mm. And, like, I'm obsessed with, like, T-shirts now. Right, like bar T-shirts specifically, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, I'm, how is this not, like, a big thing where it's, mm. like, yeah, you know, like, back in the day, like, hipsters would, sit, would walk around and they are like, Richard Marks concert shirt. And, like, <laughs> it's funny. And it's, like, right. and now, like... Like I feel like bar T-shirts, nobody buys them, and it's just yeah, yeah. like it, 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 they're fan, they're so unique, you know. Especially yeah, totally. If you can get a bar T-shirt from a bar that is no longer there, right? Oh my god, that's like gold, you know. 
It's it's great. You get like uh, you get like uh, details peppered into stories, like at a place like this, you wouldn't get otherwise. Because he was telling us about like one of the bar T-shirts is like the place that used to be uh, Asia SF, or not the place that's currently Asia SF used to be a bar. Do you remember the name of the bar? No, I can't it, like, remember. Get some joke around that as well. <laughs> yeah, or, exactly. But like, uh, but he was saying like, yeah, the uh, um, like back in those days, like the basement of that place was just nothing but like, you know, like people fist fucking and whatnot. <laughs> exactly. He's like, I went to like a sex party at this place. And he's like, and then I had this like treasured like t-shirt. <laughs> it's like, and he's like, and someone and some fucking sex party stole motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, there's no honor at sex parties anymore, dude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, it used to be you couldn't even get into a sex party unless you, uh, you know, unless you were nobility. That's <laughs> exactly. Don't you have any goddamn common courtesy not to steal that's a man's like bar shirt? That's enough to make a guy fly private. <laughs> <laughs> um, you were talking about like your, um, your health. Yeah, like, and how awful it is. I got back to got got back from Vegas, and the first thing I did is like go and give blood. Mm, nice. <laughs> and, uh, I'll probably be using that later. <laughs> the. Uh, <clears throat> The thing about like going to give blood now is like I went down to the blood centers of the Pacific, and there's like a big sign when you get there. It's like we need all types of blood, but is there like we, just a big bucket? They're like, <laughs> put your, dump your blood in here. <laughs> but like, but we really need O negative blood, and I am O negative. Mm. So I went down there, and they were just You're like, like a rock star there. Right, exactly. like right to the front of the line, Mr. Clear. He's like, oh, oh, right this way, sir. <laughs> and what's, what's your blood type? Uh, a positive. Fuck off. Back to the line. <laughs> yeah, not unless. We'll give you a call in uh, 100 years and we might need some of yours. <laughs> and uh, so you get in there, and the woman at the reception, she was just like, oh, you're so great to come in on your day off. And I was just like, as long as there's no more questions, I am. <laughs> it is my day off of. Uh, not not coming in here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I went to... And, uh, also, like, every time I go give blood, like, I... <laughs> the, like, they, they're giving you all your vitals. And I know, like, health has more to do with, like, the three things they check. Yeah. But, like, the woman who's checking my pulse and my blood pressure and my uh, iron level, she's just like, oh, wow, you're really healthy. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> 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 oh like, the fact that you people That's... call me uh, because you want my blood makes me laugh. <laughs> oh, I had no idea that your blood testing machines were all broken. <laughs> exactly. I think you may want to uh, turn it on. <laughs> uh, so I got that. Like, and, and of course, like and by the way, uh, giving blood is like the best thing you can do. Uh, and also, you become a cr- you suddenly become a cheap drunk. Oh, well, there we go. They say, hey, you know what? You shouldn't drink any alcohol after you give blood. But like, that's more of a guideline than a rule. Yeah, I mean, like they're talking about like shortly after, like in, in the, <laughs> like five minutes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and when you go and sit at the uh, the cookie bar, it's like, don't <laughs> do shots. <laughs> don't don't drink while it's coming out. <laughs> that's a, that's all. And let me tell you something. There are plenty of things in this world that I am not good at, but bleeding into a bag <laughs> ain't one of them. <laughs> Uh, okay, do you want to take a break? Yes, we should. Let's take a break, and we'll come back, and we'll talk about uh, the tournament. Speaking of fist bucking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and being, my, my being in Vegas. All right, this is SF Barcast. We'll be right back. SF Eagle. The Spiegel. The Spiegel. Um, right. Oh, my God. You know how I mentioned earlier that there is a open mic night here that's <laughs> so happening? You, so you know I mentioned that this is a gay bar? <laughs> <laughs> I, went to the men, I went to the in. men's room and had a revelation. By the way, every time I'm in a gay bar uh, and I read the graffiti on the wall, right? and if there's anything I don't I, I even completely understand the reference to i think it's just like some gay thing that like i did just not privy to like it's like someone wrote i love them cocoa puffs and i'm just like oh what could that mean <laughs> i'm just like maybe the guy just likes cereal come on <laughs> or maybe he likes uh, gargling black guy's balls right <laughs> sure well why not <laughs> well i mean you uh you've got a better creativity than i you have a better <laughs> imagination than i do 
Um, so, like, the comics are starting to trickle in. And, oh, my God, Joe fucking Gorman showed up. <laughs> <laughs> and we, the thing is, we, we're going to do our, our sports section now for yeah, yeah. segment two. And uh, I'm going to bring Gorman on later. But the thing is, you know, I can't have him on uh, now because we're not going to talk about men in tights uh, <laughs> in, in a, like, a wrestling ring. But... So, Andrew, the tournament. I went to Vegas in the tournament, and I told, I did say publicly that I was going to break up with sports gambling, but mm-hmm. I put that on hiatus for the first four days of the tournament. And as we all know, uh, betting on uh, college basketball is uh, the closest thing to a sure thing you're ever going to get because there's never any upsets. First off, I should have known going into it because I was doing a little bit of research, and they were saying this could be the best tournament ever because it's the hardest one to predict. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, I'll go, I'll go. For them. So I'm like, oh, so I'll go put money on it. <laughs> yeah, like exactly. that. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's it's going to be so much easier to win money. So I totally took a bath on this. And, like, you know, everybody's complaining about Michigan State, like, fucking up their bracket. Right. They fucked up my bracket, too. But, yeah. like, they've also fucked up some of my money. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a much more serious offense. And then, like, when I got back. I was listening to some sports talk radio, mm-hmm. and like all these like experts were talking about how they um, they were like, "Oh, this is a very boring tournament because after the first two rounds, after the first weekend, all like the all the big universities, all the big schools advanced." Right. And my reaction to that is like, "Yeah, but they didn't fucking cover." <laughs> so exactly. They didn't, what they didn't cover the uh, the who, the over uh, the over at all? So who cares, <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, that's great. And, like, you know, the, the big thing is, like, uh, Texas A&M was down by – they had a 14-2 to two run or something like that yeah, in, like, in like last minute. 44 <laughs> seconds, yeah, ridiculous. which is absolutely absurd. Right. But they had to win by eight. You know, oh, yeah. They didn't win by eight. Well, okay, like, the worst story that I heard and, – and who knows if this is true because this is the kind of thing that you, you, you we'll probably see. make up afterwards. We'll see if it's the worst story. But, like, Cousin <laughs> Sal from, like, uh, the Jimmy Kimmel show or whatever – Supposedly he had uh, he had like northern was it northern Iowa they were playing northern Iowa like northern Iowa he had the money line oh so like I should have bought the money line like he's like so he's like twelve you know he's like twelve up with forty seconds to go and he's like you're, you're spending that fucking money yeah absolutely <laughs> like, and you so. also are like yeah well here's the thing why is he taking the money line oh I guess he gets better odds right he probably gets a better payoff gets better odds because they're he's like a sure underdog, thing right? yeah. Um, but still, it's like... <laughs> Busting with the ring ding. <laughs> um, yeah, so like, I, I, I won a few bets, but not enough to, to yeah. like, clear like the fucking uh, like, holocaust of the rest <laughs> of those bets. <laughs> That's right. Not enough to be able to like drive back or anything. If there's, if there's one thing that can make you feel good about like losing a bunch of money at the sports books... <laughs> Please enlighten me. Is having somebody next to you who's lost more. Ah. <laughs> and let me tell you, uh, I went to Vegas for like this sort of like um, going away party for this uh, friend of mine who used to work at Zappos. Yeah, so yeah. a bunch of us old Zappos people like showed up. And this one dude says to me, he's like, what do you think about Arizona beating Wichita State? And right. I was like, well, Arizona, didn't they win the Pac-12 tournament? And weren't they like... Or, or they either the one Pac-12 tournament, and they were like ranked really high. I was like, uh, Wichita State is a the, uh, supposedly the last team that made it into the tournament. Right. So I was like, like and them in Syracuse, like, yeah. and, and who are both like, or, you know, or Syracuse in the final. So he's game. like, yeah, it's a pick'em game, so there's no there's no line. I was like, yeah, I think that's a good bet. Right. And he's like, yeah, I think I'm gonna bet on Arizona. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to bet on Arizona. <laughs> you know what? You're a genius. So here we go. I put $100 on Arizona. All right. He puts $4,500 on Arizona. <laughs> you're like, ooh, uh, uh, you like them more than I do. <laughs> you, wow. You, you have an inside. And then his friend from high school was with him. He puts another two grand on Arizona. Oh, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so I'm and, watching uh, the did game. He, did they go to Arizona? Like. Well, actually, one of them like lives in uh, Tucson. That was great. Uh, but here, yeah, here's the thing, man. Like, if there's anything that can take the sting out of it, it's like looking like two feet away and seeing somebody <laughs> who's worse off than you. <laughs> and like, like it, it's awful because the guy, he's like a sweet dude, and he doesn't yeah. have a whole lot of money, <laughs> and he's he's not like one of these rich people. Right, um, right. But he's kind of got a little gambling problem. <laughs> um, but 
by towards the end of the game, if you watch the game, Arizona was never ahead. Right, right. And like towards the like uh, who's their coach? Like Sean Sean Graham or Sean, Sean Miller? Sean Miller. Like <laughs> like if you'd taken the money line on him drowning in his own sweat. Oh my god, he <laughs> like, he sweat more than Nixon. <laughs> people were like it was basically like a wet t shirt contest. Like, it was right absolutely at the end of it. insane. And so, yeah, like by the towards the end of the game, when it was clear that Arizona wasn't going to win, my right. friend was on his phone trying to get earlier flights out of <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> he's like, I know, because he's like, if I stay here, I'm just going to be chasing the dragon trying to win that back. Right. I'm like, oh my god, yeah, get the fuck out of here, dude. <laughs> Let's go, go feed your kids. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> go get your story straight. <laughs> go back to your family. <laughs> Well, like actually, like a week before that, I was in uh, I was in Reno, um, uh, visiting my brother, and uh, um, and I was I was waiting for him to get off work, so I was hanging around the uh, the Pepper Mill, which is a, a beautiful and uh, cigar stinky uh, casino in Reno. And Although you know it's it's <laughs> stinky. Somehow nicer than all the rest. Exactly, it's <laughs> like, like the yeah. best. It's the, like the best casino. It's like the Pepper Mill. <laughs> or no, the Silver Legacy is the, the the best. Yeah, yeah. Like the Pepper Mill is pretty gross. But yeah, uh, um, yeah, like, and I was just sitting in the sports book, like uh, Killing Time, or whatever like that. And there were there were there were guys like uh, um, like wandering up, like to place like horse bets, like that were just like <laughs> like just mwah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, <laughs> exactly. Or just like the guys wearing like dre- like like dress shoes with no socks, and then like Lebowski shorts and a robe. <laughs> I love like, those. Was, like, I love those guys who are like at the sports book who aren't watching the basketball games. They're right. only watching the ponies or the little ponies, the yeah. dogs. And they're yelling. Ah, ah, oh yeah, ah. yeah. Like yeah, there was some guy. Like he was just like he was just chanting gibberish over. Yeah, like and it was just like number three, Papa eat, Papa eat. <laughs> so he's just like, what are you? What? Oh my god, <laughs> Papa eat. That sounds like a fucking like Haitian dictator. <laughs> uh, the <laughs> when I was last time I was in Reno, I was in the Silver Legacy, and like. Uh, Kevin, friend of the show, Kevin Montgomery, and I are walking through, and I can see this fucking dude kind of like, it's like four in the morning, mm-hmm. and this guy's kind of got his eye on us, and he's coming closer, and I'm like, oh shit, what the hell? Because like, Reno can be sketchy. Yeah, yeah. And um, so th- this dude comes over to us, and he goes, hey, hey, you guys want to buy some cocaine? And we were like, uh, no, no thanks, man. And he's like, well, let me ask you this. You got any change? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, so the Coke must be great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Co- Coke business is doing really well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no cocaine, eh? Street news? Yeah, so, like, basically, that that's my, like, Vegas thing. And I, I don't have, like, a – I don't have a horse in the race. I'm, like, so beaten from, like, the first, like, uh, four <laughs> days of the tournament. I know it starts up again tomorrow. Well, it's uh, funny, you, like, Is there anybody that you like from here on out? Well, like, uh, like – Strangely enough, like my bracket's still pretty intact uh, as far as the final. Uh, no, in fact, I have uh, I have Kansas getting beat by Maryland in the, in, uh, in the uh, final eight, and that's the, that's essentially like one of the only differences between my bracket and uh, um, uh, friend of the show uh, um, from the uh, right spot. Um, oh, I forget. Danny. Yes, Annie. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Good friend of the show whose name I can't recall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, her like her uh, like her bracket is essentially exactly like mine, except she has like Kansas going into the final four. But we both have like I think we both have like Oregon beating like North Carolina for the final, which is weird. But like the first, two I don't have a lot of uh, faith in that at all. But. The first two days of the tournament, I had I had Cal, yeah, uh, going to the final four. Right. I totally missed this because I was in transit. But I guess like the best player in Cal decided it was a perfect time right before the tournament to break his fucking hand, <laughs> and so he's out. Right. And so and then right after that, and I had like Michigan State winning it all, and they yeah. they lose in the first fucking round too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's uh, it, it's absolutely insane. So I don't have I, like everybody seems to think that Kansas is gonna roll, and yeah. the thing is like I I swore off Kansas, although I've sworn off a lot of things in my life, and I went back to. Right. <laughs> Uh, so, like, I couldn't, like, pick Kansas, but it just looks like Kansas is going to roll from here on out. Well, somebody had said, like, the worst possible outcome, like, for anybody that follows, like, college basketball would be, like, if, uh, um, if like, Krzyzewski, uh, um, Jim Beheim, um, uh let's see, uh, oh, Bill Self, and uh, um, 
and the coach of uh, Kentucky. What's his name? Uh, um, Calipari. Calipari. Like, if they all get in the Final Four, like, it'll be, like, the yeah. biggest, like, fucking dick size, you know, dick measurement, like, no, fucking ego fest but ever. That would be great. You know why? Because because of the one-and-done rule now where, like, players, like, young players can only have to go to college, only have to pretend they're going to college for yeah. one year. It's like the only thing that's that that stays that is constant in college basketball is the coaches. Yeah, it's true. So yeah. it's like, yeah, you get like, yeah, I'd rather ha- I'd ha- like to have all those guys there because they're the real stars. Yeah, it's like true, everybody yeah. like back in the day, like when I was a kid, here's uh, old man time, old man <laughs> right. uh, off my lawn time. Back when, when I was Patrick Ewing was Patrick Ewing. Shots. Patrick Ewing was like Patrick Ewing played for four years. Like yeah. uh, Elijah, I think played for three or four years. Yeah. And like you start doing the math on like what like what Kentucky teams would look like if if uh, you know like even like last year the year before if everyone stayed four years like yeah they'd have these just fucking ridiculous super teams. If any of our listeners are uh, like crazy sports fans and also like programmers, right? I feel like if you just enter all that information in and you're like okay, like Kevin Durant like went to Texas for one year, but if he'd right. stayed for four years, he would have been playing with like Lamarcus Aldridge. Right. And it's like you think of like the fucking super teams that could have been you know like the like Kentucky would still have Nerland's Noel <laughs> <laughs> yeah. unfortunately he still sucks the only problem with, with that is that like Kentucky has so much turnover of like all these like all Americans where yeah. it's just like yeah Rondo played there Noel played there right. but also like all these Tony other Delk. yeah <laughs> fucking like Anthony Davis and Kate Gilchrist. Yeah. <laughs> Kate Gilchrist, by the way, sounds like a gunslinger. <laughs> oh. it's a first, first he was Kid Gilchrist, then Kid Presentable. There is some comic. Oh, he's got to be a local comic. He has this great joke where he's, he's, he said one of his friends said to him, hey, do you want to come over and watch a movie? He's like, yeah, what movie? He says, it's called The Assassination of Jesse James by the Coward... Oh, yeah, Rob Ford or whatever. Rob Ford. <laughs> he goes, oh. Who's the mayor that just died from Toronto? <laughs> yeah, he's like, it's called, like, the assassination of Jesse James by the coward. Like, geez, right. Rob Ford. And he goes, oh, really? What's it about? <laughs> right. it's, like, uh, it's about the stock market. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's a metaphor, you know. <laughs> it's, you know it's, uh, it's one of those crazy uh, fucking Terrence Malick movies. You know, uh, no one knows what's, what it's about. Hey, we have uh, one other sports thing now that we're, we put, like, the tournament to bed. Uh, one other sports thing here to talk about is, have you been following Adam LaRoche's fucking kid? No. Okay, so Adam LaRoche, he's playing, he is a really, like, he used to be a good player. He's a really shitty player for the White Sox now. Okay. And when he signed with the White Sox, he had this sort of gentleman's agreement that his kid could be there, like, in perpetuity. You know, <laughs> like, like as long as he's there, his kid can be there, right? Right. Like doing what? Just like hanging being out, a, being a bad boy. Yeah. Okay. All right. And like they, they gave the kid his own locker and his his own like. Well, the kid's like some like I don't know, thir- I don't know, eleven or twelve or thirteen, like, somewhere is he, around is there. Is he some kind of like a <laughs> like potato head or something like no, that? Where, no, 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 no. Where he's, he's, where he's not, not going to ha- no, he's, he's not, not going to be able to get a, like a, a a job like a regular job anytime. No, he doesn't have progeria or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> he's, he, just, he doesn't have bun- Benjamin Button disease, <laughs> and he's actually like ninety years old. Exactly. <laughs> so he's just like he's just like there. And then like the general manager Kenny Williams said that like some of the players were like, hey, you know what? This fucking kid is always there. Right. And so, like, the, he told him, Adam LaRoche, look, man, you got to, like, dial it back. You got to, like, not bring yeah. your kid around so often. And so Adam LaRoche retired. What? Because he couldn't let it, because they told him his kid's now no longer welcome. Oh, so that's good. Like, that won't put any fucking, like, pressure on that kid, like, as he gets, you know, oh, really? Like, uh, my dad, like, fucking retired because the White Sox wouldn't, like, make me, like, their fucking mascot? It was, like, something like $9 million. I mean, like, it was, like, the end of his contract, but right. it, was, like, it was, like, $9 million that, like, LaRoche walked away from, and he made it seem like, yeah, well, don't make me choose between my family and my sport. It's like, dude... I already what? bought. I already bought a Confederate flag and a pickup. I got everything I need. Dude, like, like, uh, like, this may sound like insensitive, but Adam, fuck your kid. <laughs> it's nine million dollars. Like, right. come, like, guess what? That kid wants to have a little piece of that. Right. Well, and what, uh, like, so what's uh, Adam, Adam LaRoche doing now? Like, the like, because I mean, like, if you you know, if you just walk away from baseball, it's not like you know, the, uh, like, everyone's like, uh, hey, like, what do you, you know. Uh, come work for our, uh, you know, Fortune 500 company. 
Right, exactly. And the thing is, like, and, and then there were, like, all these, like, protests that, like, the team was, like, some guys on the team were going to protest that they were going to, like, not play this one, like, spring training game. Oh, heaven forbid. <laughs> uh, because oh, one of the uh, retirees in Coral Gables would be so upset that you didn't show up. You're like, like, it just At least seems those like that can the know, most... remember their own name anyway. And also, like, LaRoche was, like, hitting something like 210 last year. He, like, he sucked. Right. You know, so. so it's like, I'm going to take my ninth in the batting order prowess and, like, uh, go elsewhere. It's like, why? I mean, like, even if you wanted to retire, just be like, okay, I'm going to retire. Right. But he made it a thing in the, in the press. By saying, like, oh, yeah, my kid's not welcome here. It's just like... Not like, welcome. <laughs> As if they said, like, uh, shoot his kid on sight. Like, <laughs> just, just throw him right in jail. But also, like, I mean, think about it. Like, I've never been in a clubhouse for a, a baseball team. Yeah. But, like, at some point, it can't be. It's not all, like, good for, like, a 10-year-old kid. Well, yeah, you would you think. You know, it's, yeah, like, it's got to be at some point where, like, someone's, like, fucking screaming at someone. Right. And someone's getting shot in the ass with who knows what. And, like, like well, no one wants to, like, why would you, like, why would you put that, you know, that kid through that where, like, now, like, like especially now, even if they had caved, like, everyone in the entire organization would be like, yeah, you're only here because your fucking dad threatened to quit. Or, like, uh, or he did quit. Like, so now your kid has nothing. Your kid has, you know. Now your kid knows that he, like, ruined your career and, like, doesn't get to go to baseball games anymore. But isn't it one of those things where it's, like, people, like, you know, you can never, like, talk. I mean, I don't come in contact with too many fathers yeah. but it's, or, like, parents, but it's, like, I know one of the rules is, like. The court order says anyway. You never. What? I said that's what the court order says anyway. Exactly. <laughs> but, like, you never know how, like, some people parent. Yeah, yeah. And, like, if you're dealing with somebody who thinks that their parent, their kid is, like, fucking you know the gods give or like some shining star in the sky and your kid does something stupid and like you go hey knock it off like the parent may come at you and be like hey hey don't you discourage him (laughs) that's right and so like now you have like a whole football like a whole baseball team saying hey yeah knock it off right don't like (laughs) nobody (laughs) no no one wants to look at your stupid kid while we while we talk about the stripper we had sex with last night (laughs) exactly i'm sure it was like a lot of the younger guys who were just like yeah like you know what we're young dudes and like we got this kid standing around it's like you're you're a great family man fuck you who cares (laughs) exactly go and play with your kids Uh, well i can i can i go to work and play with my kid uh but it's like I can just see Adam Lor- <laughs> like it's like Adam, why would you want to put your kid in that situation? It's like right. oh if my kid can't like be in the clubhouse all the time. How is he not going to see like you know major league dongs coming out of the <laughs> shower? <laughs> yeah, exactly. what, if, what if I uh, want him to see uh, <laughs> fucking? I, don't, I have no idea who plays for anybody anymore, so I wouldn't. <laughs> I can't even make references. I'd be like so anyway. I think we can put that like one Pittsburgh to bed. Pirates. Uh, does Willie Stargell still play for them? No, you think he's dead actually? <laughs> Does, but does he still play? <laughs> the answer, answer the question. <laughs> Stop dodging the question, counselor. All right, so uh, I think we put, like, the, that was my hot take on Adam LaRoche's dumb kit. <laughs> <laughs> so hope, take that, I, <laughs> baseball player I, hope, I never heard of before. I hope at the very, like, least they get, they get like, a reality television show out of it. Of, like, basically, like, right. Adam LaRoche watching White Sox games with his dumb kid. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like the new, uh, uh, the new like Lyle Alzado in the in the back row of the stadium. It'll be like Adam Larouche like trying to see around some like <laughs> some guy's afro with his kid. <laughs> like he could have been playing this game, but like he's a fucking terrible father. Exactly. <laughs> he's, tr- he's trying to talk them down on the fucking like beer prices. <laughs> All right, this is SF Barcast. We'll be back from the SF. All right, and we are back. At, at the SF Eagle. At the SF Eagle. Yeah. Having a good time, man? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, you know, like, like I said, like the uh, oh, you know, the, client here, the clientele here has been nothing but sweet to us, and the uh, bartenders have been, like, uh, super nice dudes. One of the things I totally forgot to, like, mention about this bar is that, like, you know, there's a, like, a, what do you got, a beer garden? Like a oh, yeah, out- like outdoor. Oh, yeah, big giant patio. Patio. Oh, it's yeah, patio. Yeah. It's a big patio. It's, like, in San Francisco, there like, is only a handful of bars that have, like, nice, like, Totally well, aired out patio, and it appears like the the best part of it is that you're up against like two commercial buildings, and so you're not going to have like. A and so, fuck them. Well, 
I was gonna say you're not gonna have like uh, like residents calling down and being like, um, I pay six thousand dollars a month for this place. I don't want to have to watch uh, dudes in leather fist fuck each other. <laughs> you might have like people calling in saying like, Hey, you know what? I'm squatting in this garage. Can you keep it down? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, can you uh, at least make it so uh, my camera will be able to take better pictures of what's going on? The other great thing about this bar is that they they've been playing great music. Yeah, like a lot of good. like. Sort of it's like all tool and rage against the machine. It's all like, like '90s, like heavy rock. Right. Like uh, it's all that. It's all that music that I didn't know was gay until this very minute. <laughs> Where I'm like, oh, of course it is. <laughs> Dude, think about it. It's like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. like, although, did have are, are you like me? Where it's like in the '90s, I was like really into like tool. Yeah, yeah. Of course, everybody was. And then like, you know, hearing it here in the, this context, like if I was at, if I was at the aforementioned like sex club, right, and where everybody's like fist fucking each other right. and they're playing tool I'd be like oh yeah this makes sense <laughs> like, oh, like, like, like back in I the thought that was a metaphor <laughs> <laughs> back, in, yeah, back in the 90s <laughs> wait a stink fist uh, <laughs> and then back in like the 90s I was just like no I'm an edgy like person I'm like, an right, edgy right. 20 year old it's <laughs> like no you're, I'm like no you were the next breed of people that didn't know that Judas Priest was gay <laughs> <laughs> exactly uh so, have you seen any movies recently? Oh gosh, let's see. I, I saw um, I saw the movie Carol. Carol. Um, Carol. And uh, it was all right. Like I didn't. I, I thought it was a little overrated. Like, oh, wait, is I, I like Todd Haynes. Todd Haynes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, um, I mean, it's you know, I, I felt like the uh, um, Na- not, not Naomi Watts. What's her name? Kate Blanchett. Like the Kate Blanchett, Blanchett. character. Like, uh, um, just seemed like kind of a miserable person. She's like the. N- Kate Blanchett, as I haven't seen the movie, mm-hmm. but like as an actress, she's like the new Meryl Streep, doesn't she? Yeah, she's sort of like yeah. She, I mean, like, she's like she gets nominated. She gets nominated for everything she does. Pretty she, much. She could do like a fucking like toilet paper commercial. <laughs> they fucking have a parade for her. <laughs> exactly. I think he should be her agent. <laughs> um. So I haven't seen anything. But here, here's the list of, of movies that I'm interested in mm-hmm. uh, that have come out recently. Ten Cloverfield Lane. Okay. It, now, see, I, I've I've only heard the name of it, and is and it, like yeah, and judging by the kind of people that are excited about it coming out, um, is is it a sequel to the Cloverfield? Yes. Mo- which is so weird because like I I don't think of that movie as being a success in any way. Well, I just think I actually really like that movie, but like I, it's oh, it very fun. very hard to like find people who like yeah. it. I mean, the thing is, I like monster it movies. Seems like in a weird way, it seems dated because like, like it was one of the first movies where it's like, hey, we can like. We can like CGI like crowd reactions on a huge like scale. Yeah, and it's all POV. Like that. Yeah, yeah. So it's like yeah, yeah. It's like it was one of the first movies to sort of like blend like verite and like CGI. Right. Exactly. But the thing is, like, it's if done I might with, think it, of the most <laughs> snotty thing I've ever said in my it's, life. It's done with like a high budget, and but <laughs> right. like yeah, it's, it's still like at the very end, it's like an end of the world monster movie. So like, hey man, right. I'm on board. Um, at the end of the day, it's got T.J. Miller in it. So why just spend all that money? But then, like, you know, if you really want to, like, sit back, like, you know, take a step back from, like, the original Cloverfield, you're like, oh, this is like if a monster attacked, like, a Strokes video. Right. It's like everybody in it is, like, some, like, model. <laughs> right. The only person who's, like, not, like, a male or female model is, like, T.J. Miller, and he's just there as, like, for yuck yuck factor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I guess I wouldn't mind. So, I mean, like, does it, uh, do, like, is there something different about it, or does it, like... Is there like a yeah? You know, well, or is it just a sequel? Well, I guess the thing like a lot of people didn't know that they were making the movie, hmm. and then like you know like uh, what's his name? Uh, J. J. Abrams. J. J. Abrams. I almost said right. William H. Macy. J. J. Abrams. J. J. Abrams. Possibly the best J. J. ever. <laughs> you know, after J. J. Walker, <laughs> That's right. he's like surpassed well, J. J. Walker. J. J. Walker, of course. Uh, so Ten Cloverfield Lane, and Batman vs Superman came out, and I know there's a. L- the early like uh, word on it is that it's fucking horrible, but oh, like I a statement I can totally believe. Exactly, it, it's a Zack Snyder film, but like I want to see it for some reason. Like, um, you want to see? Uh, you want to see if they make out at the end? Yeah, Deadpool, which I didn't want to, I don't want to see, uh, yeah. but it made a shit ton of money. Right. Uh, Hail Caesar came out and gone and is gone. Yeah, you know what? Like that, uh, that really like didn't like have any traction at all. I'm surprised. It's a, it's, and, and it's a, it's a comedy by the Coen Brothers, saying like you. Know, I mean, you look back on it, it's like, oh, like Fargo and like the Big Lebowski. It's right. like there's some great like shit that they've done comedy wise. I feel like when they when they get to like, because uh, what was that? Uh, what was that one movie with uh, 
Catherine Zeta Jones and George Clooney that they did. Oh, Intolerable Cruelty? No. Yeah. Oh, was that what it was called? I think, and, and like, and it was basically like a, uh, um, you know, a throwback to like, you know, uh, Hepburn, Tracy sort of like, you know, banter and like you know, that, that kind of shit. And like everyone was like, fuck you, who cares? But, I, like, actually, I, I feel like Hail Caesar is kind of the same sort of like yeah. swing at it where it's like, we're going to do like, you know, Hollywood of the 30s and 40s because everybody loves that. And everyone's like, no, we don't. <laughs> Although you, you have to like, <laughs> you really, you really have to hand it to them. In that, like, they can have the biggest. They have the biggest stars in Hollywood. They have yeah. Scarlett Johansson. They have Channing Tatum. They have right. George Clooney. They have like all the like. They have uh, Jonah Hill. Right. They have all these like big actors, and people are just like, "Yeah, we're gonna pass." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, we don't, we don't give like, a fuck. <laughs> that sounds really boring, actually. <laughs> what like, we like? We, we spent you know eighty million dollars on actors. In anything else, we would be lining up around the block. <laughs> <laughs> Like, we lined up to see Salt. <laughs> with <fucking laughs> right. Angelina Jolie, but we're not lining up to see that. Uh, and the last one that uh, I wanted to see, I wanted, just wanted to point out that, like, these are all movies I want to see that I have, did not, I haven't seen any of them because I don't, because I don't want to leave my house. Uh, the Brothers Grimsley, Grimsby. Brothers Grimsby? I have it's, no idea what that is. It's a Sasha Baron Cohen film. Oh, that, that movie. Oh, okay, yeah. Like, yeah, that, that looks like it might be funny. Like, yeah. Uh, like in a, you know, in in a way that like doesn't warrant any sort of mainstream success, but like it might be like you know, like funny, like in, you know, in an underground kind of way. Like, well, here's I'm sure the thing. it's really like yeah, you know, like gross and British, basically. Here's the thing: you and I, one of the best. Um, I'm going to speak for you here. One of the oh, best best that. experiences of our lives <laughs> was when we saw that preview to uh, Borat. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. it was you, me, and Chad Lehrman and his wife. Right. And we lined up. And, and not like a not like a preview of like a, like a movie preview, but like an actual screening. Uh, like oh yeah. Ahead yeah. of time of the movie. And, and not one of those promotional things to get like people talking about it the weekend of. It was like a month before Mark yeah, totally, came yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. And there was like rumor that like he was going to show up at one of these locations, the one of these eleven locations. And it seemed like a bullshit rumor. That I mean, like you know, it was just one of those things where it's like. Like, let's get everyone, like, a buzz about, like, this happening. But then, yeah, like, I remember, like, sitting in the theater and, like, I think we, we'd gone, like, 45 minutes past when the movie was going to start. And I was like, you know what? He's fucking here because otherwise, like, what possible motivation do they have not to show the movie yet? Unless he's in transit and doesn't know if he'll be able to make it. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's no other reason for this to happen. And, yeah, that's what happened. Like, yeah. he showed up. He, like, came out of nowhere. And it's like, you gotta understand, these are the people who waited in line for like two hours to see. <laughs> so these are his biggest fans. And then he right. comes out in Borat character. Yeah, just like fucking like high fives the whole audience, runs through it. It like, was yeah, like, like, honestly, I, I felt like that's the closest. I've never been in a airplane fire. <laughs> but like, that's probably the closest. I, that's my impression of what it would be like. Because people right. were jumping over the seats to get to them. <laughs> right. And so, okay, so, like, it's a sash, like, the Brothers Grimm's... Grimm's a lot of story. other people are shouting, like, I can't get my oxygen tank to work for my baby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're not all going to live, but some of us are going to really live. <laughs> so, who wants to have sex? <laughs> and so the Brothers Grimsby is... But here, here's, like, the... It's something that maybe you and I both would like, because it's about, yeah, yeah. like, a, a soccer hooligan. Yeah, totally. Right? But... Here's the uh, bad news on it. In two weeks, it's made $6 million. Ooh. Ouch. Ooh. Ouch. Wow, like, uh, that's Damn. No, no goodwill <laughs> built up from Borat at all. Okay, the other thing I want to say is... Oh, you know what? There's a, there's another movie I saw, and that was the uh, oh, uh, Pee-wee, uh, Pee-wee's Holiday. Like, why why is he having out. a holiday movie in the middle like of No, no, it's like a, I think it's like a holiday as in vacation. Like, uh, oh, okay. I thought it was like... like but uh, it, was, it was good. I enjoyed it. The uh, uh, John Lee, the uh, one of uh, uh, John Lee and Vernon Chapman, the guys that uh, created Wonder Shows and, and like uh, Vernon Chapman, um, wasn't he in uh, Living Color? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> it was also it's Vernon Reed. <laughs> but like uh, they're the uh, pride of uh, San Francisco State. Like uh, oh yeah, that's right. I can't believe those guys. Those guys went to San Francisco State. I know, and like they're uh, no, they actually. You know what? I retract that. <laughs> I can totally believe that those two fuckheads. <laughs> yeah. went to right. I mean, because. You and I went to San Francisco. Right. State. <laughs> like, I can't believe that uh, two tr- drunk, high, funny guys went to San Francisco State. All right. Uh, one last thing I want to say about uh, both like current events here yeah. is uh, Fife, Fife Dog from uh, Tribe Paw Quest Never died. Heard of, no, just, <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. And like, I just want to like point out that in the last 
and like in a very short time, here's a list of people who have died. Oh, should we play so, like violin music under this? I know. Well, like, here's the thing: like every year like, during in like, memoriam for to the first two months. Yeah. It, but here's the thing: it's only we're only like uh, halfway through the third month. Okay? Yeah. Well, and here, all here are people who have died just in this year alone. Yeah. Five Dog from Tribe. That's it, right? Bowie. Craig, Craig Wait, Sager. Craig Bowie? <laughs> Daniel Bowie. <laughs> okay. Craig Sager, although that one is on order. Wait, Craig Sager? The uh, sportscaster? Yeah, he, he's like, his uh, leukemia is no longer in, in remission. Oh. They've right given him three to six months Jesus to age. live. All right, well, so it's like, that's bad news. Uh, if you're gambling on it. <laughs> <laughs> What's the over? <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take the money line on him dying. <laughs> uh, Glenn Fry, Natalie Cole, a lot of right. like um, a lot of musicians have died so far this yeah, year. Yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, the guy who played uh, Don't Mayor. Don't be a musician. That's the le- the lesson there. The guy who played Mayor Lenny Klotch in Ghostbusters died. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lenny. That was one of the big ones. If you. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't think I know anyone that was able to go to work the next day be, after that. <laughs> you would be saving the lives of millions of registered voters. <laughs> uh, Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman, that's right. Dan Haggerty. The Haggers. Uh, the Blowfly. Well, yeah, indeed. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. That's, oh. A, that's a rough one. Told myself I wouldn't cry. <laughs> uh, Abe Pagoda. Abe Pagoda, that's right. Paul oh, Kantner from... Uh, the Doors? Uh, I was going to say REO Speedwagon, but it's, oh, it's Jefferson wait. Airplane. Yeah, you're right. What's the difference? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Vanity. Vanity, that's right. Harper Lee. Good Lord. George Kennedy. George Kennedy. George Flores. George Martin. <laughs> George George Martin. Uh, Keith the Emerson. Fifth Beatle. Um, Keith, Keith Emerson, Emerson from oh, yeah. Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and also of Emerson, Lake, and Powell. Oh, exactly, right. <laughs> um... And then in December, Let Me Kill Meister and Scott Whalen died. Yeah, that doesn't count. Oh, and that's then, December. And then right on top of that, I'm going to sprinkle, like, going back to, like, November of, like, last year, you have the Paris attack. Right. And then you have the San Bernardino terrorist attack. Sure. And now you have the Brussels attack. There so, we go. uh, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> well, and let's not forget, uh, we're about to elect Donald Trump president. So. <laughs> I know, exactly. I, I mean, I'm, my only hope is that we have. All the bad news we're going to have for this entire year. And it's just going to be front loaded. <laughs> it's front loaded, exactly. Right, it's going to be and like smooth sailing the rest of the year. It's going to be smooth sailing from here on out. <laughs> right? So, and uh, the only, only last thing I want to say is uh, something about politics is, on, and like I know, I was listening to the uh, 538 podcast that's all like Nate Silver, and all they do is like polling and stuff. Right. And thrilling listening, I'm sure. It's about the election. Right. And the thing about like Bernie Sanders supporters, it supposedly there's a new poll that says that Bernie Sanders supporters right now have said that they, 35% of them will not vote for Hillary Clinton if she gets the nomination. And it just like, it just made me so mad. Yeah. Well, and, you know, you know, I, like, here's the thing, I know- I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna guess like 20% of those aren't of voting age anyway. I know. Like, because thing, like his crowds are so young, they're, they're like non-legal voting age young. Here's the thing. I know that that's a, that's a poll that was taken now, and yeah, yeah. a lot of like Sanders supporters, who I am one of, right, right. are like smarting because it kind of looks like that uh, Hillary's going to get the get yeah. the nomination, um, and like that's before Bernie Sanders like throws his weight behind Hillary Clinton. It's right. before Bernie Sanders gives his speech in uh, Philadelphia at the Democratic National Convention. Yeah, yeah. And it's before like, they, have, they have their day. So, like, of course they have time to sort of, like, change their tune. But, oh, my God, doesn't it sound like some petulant fucking, like, child having a, oh, a temper tantrum? Yeah, yeah. Where it's just like, oh, if my, if my candidate... I'm taking my fucking vote and going home. I, I don't care if Donald Trump is going to fuck up the world. Right, yeah, like, exactly. I, I, I'm not going to vote for that bitch. I wanted my thing. Exactly. It's like, you know, like, if you're if you're one of those, like, supporters, and you're just like, hey, you know what, if my candidate doesn't get in, then I'm just going to fucking pack up and, like, live in the right. woods off the grid, then do it now. Well, I like, I mean, like, there's there's people I've, like, run across online and, and stuff like that that obviously seem to have no, they have no grasp, but there's a, a, there's a, a massive, like, uh, ideological difference between, like, Donald Trump and, like, 
Bernie Sanders. It couldn't be bigger. And like, but they're like, yeah, but Bernie Sanders is an independent, just like Trump. So like, I'll probably just vote for him or something. And it's like, what are you talking about? Like, you have zero concept of like, you don't even know what the word independent means when it's like attached to a party. You think that he's like, you think he's like halfway between like uh, like Hillary and like uh, and and Cruz or something? Because he's not. Like he's right. he's you know he's much further left. And like you know, the, the, you don't understand that is like criminal. Like, well, every day I feel like there are Sanders supporters who are posting like, oh, this new thing that we've uncovered via the alternative news media is going to sink the Hillary campaign. Right. You know, it's like whether it's like the voter suppression in Arizona right. like, or, or what, whatever. It's like, you know who also said shit like that? Donald Trump. Right. Because Donald Trump, like at one point said, like, I promise you, Hillary is going to be in handcuffs. The FBI right. is going to come and like uh, put her in handcuffs in like two months. It's just like, well, it's like, like people that like think that sort of internet rules apply to elections where it's like, all you have to do is like uh, go negative all the time against whoever's in second place, and then you'll win. And it's like, no, like it just makes. I mean, like no one's like, no one's going to like uh, vote for like Sanders or Hillary based on like a negative post by someone from like the others campaign. Like, like everyone should be on the same side here, first of all. And like, so you're like, you know, you're just attacking people that like essentially think almost exactly like you, you know, and in also, hopes that, like, that then they'll, uh, we'll all elect someone that's good for nobody. And also, like, having no concept or grasp over incremental sort of progression. Or yeah, exactly, like, yeah. Like, it's like, you know, uh, I want everything now or, or never. Yeah, like, like Sanders, like, he pulled Hillary to the left. And the fact yeah. that he's going to, like, have this, like, speech at the, at the Democratic convention, it's like, it's going to be a big moment. Sure. You know? Yeah. But like, unless but everyone's to, to, a big fucking baby about it. Exactly. But, but to be just like, well, if my guy doesn't win, then like, you know, fuck it. It's yeah. Like, you know, it's <laughs> Let's like, burn the whole place down. It's like if I don't get everything I want, like right now, right. Then I'm gonna fucking like throw a tantrum. It's right. just like, dude, like guess guess who didn't do that? In 2008, when Hillary was the front runner, and it right. became clear that Obama was gonna get the nomination. Like, the Hillary supporters went, okay, we'll go with Obama. Right. You know, like, because they're fucking adults. And, like, and then maybe he'll, like, make me Secretary of State, which he did. So right, like, exactly. It so all like, worked out. They, it's like, don't throw a tantrum and go live in the woods. Or actually, <laughs> go do throw a tantrum and go live in the woods. <laughs> right. <laughs> Whatever you like. Okay, uh, you know what, let's take a break. Now, now that I have all my hot takes out of my system. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> and blood. I feel, I feel like yeah, I got blood, hot takes. I got <laughs> a haircut you recently. Pretty much drained everything out of your body. Exactly. You go beat off into the toilet. And maybe we'll bring uh, Joe Gorman over for just just to say goodbye because he's. <laughs> just to explain what that smell uh, wafting so, over from where he like, is. I'm, like I'm looking right now at the, the group of comedians who are waiting to get on. Right. And they are just like. It's like this cloud of smoke. Yeah, it's like it might as well. They're really going to give their best effort tonight. <laughs> it might as well be like a, like a, boys' room, high school boys' room, right? In like the seventies. It's just like right. there's just like this cloud of pot smoke everywhere. All right, uh, this is SF. shameful. Just shameful. Absolutely. We'll, we'll bring we'll bring uh, Gorman over here and maybe give him a demerit. <laughs> That's right. We'll offer him an uh, opportunity to change his ways. All right. All right, this is SF Barcast, and we're at the SF Eagle. We'll be right back. Mr. Dynamite! All right, and we are back at the SF Eagle. Andrew, are you having a good time? Oh, uh, probably a better time than I should admit to. Exactly. I feel like I'm going to have something to tell you by the end of this show. I think because we uh, – what the <laughs> – oh, my God. All right, don't, uh, don't, don't surprise me. And as I promised earlier, and everybody who listens to the podcast knows I make good of my promises, here is Joe Gorman – on on the podcast and Joe, like, what are you doing here? What's aside, up? aside from like regulating the men's room, man, it's Whip It Out Wednesday at the <laughs> SF Eagle. You 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 pull out your 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 penis and the bartender will take a picture, a Polaroid picture, and it goes up on the wall and you allegedly get free drinks. Now here's the thing. <laughs> allegedly. Now here's the thing that like Joe likes to lie a lot, so right. like that's something that Joe would say. But also, given the fact that we're at the SF Eagle, like, then maybe like Believe a promotion. Yeah, dude. Yeah, exactly. Like, Check your morals and the belief of the Ten Commandments at the door, baby. <laughs> or at least seven of them. Yeah. Uh, seven out of Ten Commandments. <laughs> Still honor your mother and your father. Yeah, I mean, like, like no we're matter not who you're butt fucking here. <laughs> It's like, you and, know, and keep the Sabbath holy. You can, sti- you can right. still honor your mother and father while yeah. you're fist fucking someone. In fact, that's how you honor your parents <laughs> in most occasions: is the quality of your fist fucking. Sorry, they didn't want you to be some boring idiot. Yeah, 
Get creative in there. Be like a young Jackson Pollock. <laughs> Joe, I've seen you grow up from being just nothing. Yeah. To, uh, <laughs> to, to being, you know, something. Yeah, almost a de-evolution in <laughs> no, a way. No, you're honestly like one of my favorite comics in uh, working in SM. Well, thank you. I think that I mean, a lot shows, of people have moved, yeah. moved away. But, like, also, like, why would I want to, you know, move to New York or in L.A. and then immediately move back and have to be, like, a local headliner? I'd rather just stay a local feature forever. Would you, what is, like, what, I mean, like, do you think So, unlike, would, uh, unlike, uh, like, uh, who, are, who are people you would name that have done that? Oh, what, like Matt Morales? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Nobody springs to mind. Hey, Matt Morales has been on the show. That's right. You well, congratulations. Which fucking show. terrible bar did you go to? <laughs> People are getting fucked in the bathroom here. This is the kind of bar I go to. This is real San Francisco. It's not tech bros with Bluetooths and hoverboards. I think that they it's, also have run amok on the jukebox here, though. So. Well, that's perfect. That's everything. <laughs> Dude, so, like, I was having this conversation with a comic, like, recently, and she was very upset because all of her friends were moving to L.A. or New York. Oh, boo-hoo. Maybe she should have real fucking friends and not comedy <laughs> friends. Dude, saying, like, all of your friends are comedians is like working in a desk job. And, like, I know this guy from work, and he's really cool. You know work friends, dude. Get real friends. <laughs> Fucking no. work friends leave, dude. No, Joe, that was, that's what I was saying. Is that I was like, hey, if you think it's bad for you because you're comedy, you're a comedian, your comedy friends are moving away. Yeah. Right. Well, Maybe like, you should be a better comic so you can move too. Well, no, I was saying, like, how do you think I feel? I'm always going to be here. And, like, all of my friends who are good are going to have to move away. And she's like, well, not all your friends are going to be good. <laughs> Whoa! Uh, like, well, so well, I'll be like, left no, with can... a, a bunch of mediocre, co mediocre comedian friends. <laughs> yeah, but I can, right. like, you know, Joe. Like, I know, like, you're, like, you're, you're on the rise. I'm and, on the rise. But guess what, baby? You're gonna I'm stick not, around here forever. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking around here forever because it's all going digital, and this comedy bubble is going to burst, and it's all going to be online. You can create content from your home. That's going to be the next big thing. Are People gonna, aren't going to go out to clubs. Everyone's going to want to stay inside, and they want the comedy to come to them. The business to get into will be like brick wallpaper. Yeah. Well, like, the I, business to get into, <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, welcome to my, uh, People are going to start doing more stuff from their home. Do you really think I'll give you a little time? No, I'm moving like to New that. York. I'm moving to New York. <laughs> you think I'm going to stick around in the fucking West Coast where everyone's like, ugh. Be be a Democrat. I don't what? roll that way, baby. <laughs> you want to be? You want to be? I like, want to be uh, fucking racist in New York. That's what I like really want. Like, I, I, I hate to bring it to you about racist New York, <laughs> uh, but actually, like a lot of people who move, I know who've moved to New York have a harder time than people who moved to LA. That's because it's more challenging. That's because like the exactly. quality is better in New York. And yeah. I want to go to New York to be a comedian. I don't want to do like commercials, and I don't want to be like some fucking witty stoner next door neighbor in some. You know, you'd be sitcom. great at that role, though. I wouldn't roll that way, man. It's you don't watch about that show. I watch that show. I'd watch that show. I'd well, watch you know what? Right you now. guys actually sold me on my own idea. <laughs> I too would watch that show. <laughs> Check for me on CBS's <laughs> upcoming call Larry sitcom. Charles. Well, let's get this done. I love this like like reverse pitch. It's like yeah. here's something that would be awful. Oh, actually, it's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> you mean, guys are just really good I, salesmen. <laughs> He's like, yeah, that is awful. Can yeah. we option it? <laughs> Fuck New York. I'm moving to L.A. so I can be like the stony next door neighbor on the on your next favorite sitcom. Move exactly. over, Big Bang Theory. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you know, you, do you really think that people will stop going to comedy clubs because they'll, they'll get it all like piped in? Everything's gonna happen on the cloud, baby. Mark my words. <laughs> what seems like just the ramblings of a madman in 2016 will soon be. The stone words of a prophet. Won't there still be in some 2017? There? Won't be. Wait, do you mean like words written in stone or comedy like, clubs? Or, or like in, said by comedy a stone clubs person? in San Francisco are going to start looking like malls in Detroit. All right, like <laughs> abandoned trees are going to grow out of the stage. The soundboard's all covered in moss. That sounds kind of cool, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would go there. I want to go to this Paleolithic comedy club. <laughs> But don't you think that like there's like a there's still some merit to saying, hey, I, I saw that guy live before right. he like shot up that school. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the idea. But but if like everything's like uh, virtual reality essentially, like uh, then you can still say like uh, yeah, like I wandered into this like uh, guy's room on Second Life right before he killed the president. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like, think about it. <laughs> think about that's right. I can take that to the bank. Joe, do you have any shows coming up? Fuck, are you kidding me? Of course. <laughs> we want all of our listener to uh, go to your show. Uh, you sh as well they should, <laughs> and they would be right to do it. Oh, shit. Uh -oh. 
the comedy show starting. We should set up the yeah, microphone inside. Actually, the, the comedy show is about to start, so we, we're going to have to get out of here. Good Lord. Yeah, let's, exactly. let's ditch the shithole. You think I want to do fucking comedy at a gay bar? I want to do comedy at a straight bar. <laughs> How will gay people understand the joy of fucking a woman that I describe so vividly on stage? They won't know what I'm talking about. I might as well be yelling in pig Latin or some this shit. reference is lost on you people. Yeah. You mean you and, don't uh, understand the silky, slug-like, velvety undercarriage of a pussy? Well, darling, I'm lost. Well, hey, this might get like an NC-17 rating. I don't I, know if this is like no way that would be the first time that velvety undercarriage yeah. has been said at this place. I think this is like a first for this bar. And is uh, this, our this, apologies to the management. Yeah. Will this be <laughs> BarCast's first NC-17 rating? <laughs> Usually it's like the family-friendly edition. How would that work? You have to like bring still, a parent like, yeah. to, to like, like download it? Yeah, they have Wait. to have uh, parental. Wait. Otherwise, it gets like that little explicit... Do, oh, they, do they still have NC-17 ratings for movies? I hear something. Right? Yeah, they have. Like, well, like, every, every time, thing, like, like everybody uh, has the internet, so like, you, like you can, like, what can you that's show why Playboy, on a, in yeah. a movie theater right. that like people can't see on the internet? Like a hundred times worse. Right, right. <laughs> it's like, oh, this, this guy fucked a cat. It's like, well, on the internet. <laughs> well, like every time Lars von Trier makes a movie, it's got to be like rated NC-17 first. Yeah. And then he has to, he's like, like oh, here's another shitty movie you won't see unless you think you're going to see some hardcore penetration. <laughs> and you do, but it's not the kind you want to see. That guy sucks. Make a good porn, you idiot. <laughs> Fucking good. dumbass. He either can't make a drama or can't make a porn, so he makes a <laughs> shitty halfway amalgamation of the two. He fails at everything. Yeah, dude sucks. Get some good-looking dicks. Get some good-looking vaginas. It writes itself, baby. He's, he's, he's Danish, so I think, like, you know... He's... Well, hey, maybe fucking leave porno to Americans, then, you fucking creep. <laughs> Stick to black and white classical music in the background that would style be, That'd films. be a great, like, if you made, like, a modern, like, black and white silent porno. <laughs> Well, that's how porno should be. That's the purest form of porn. You don't get distracted by all those visuals and sounds. I can't wait for the next trailer to like a Lars von Trier movie where it just says, dude sucks. <laughs> Joe Gorman. <laughs> After all, like these other panderers who took like a cinematography class, so they don't want to feel like they wasted their parents' money. So they're like captivating, breathtaking. And then a real man gets in there and says, dude, this guy sucks. I'm just here because I'm trying to bang my art student girlfriend. And you know what? Not fucking worth it, dude. Uh, That's wait. the first like major breakthrough that I think like film students have is like when they realize that they don't care what their parents think. <laughs> Where they like <laughs> wait, 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 a, a film students like they don't care what their parents well, think because like, like you know it what it starts off with like oh my god I gotta like you know I gotta make this worthwhile for my parents but then like years later when you realize fuck them who cares yeah fuck these jabronis <laughs> who birthed me <laughs> jabronis I like I, I had that moment where I was like yeah I'm gonna go to film school you know why because the graduate was overrated <laughs> fuck you mom and dad <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go shove it in Mike Nichols' face. <laughs> well, <laughs> by the way, I do think The Graduate is overrated, oh, right. but that's a whole other. I movie. would agree with you there. Like, so you're not gonna get a fight from me on that movie. Uh, Joe, what's your favorite movie of all time? Of all time, um, The Matrix Revolutions. Of course, because <laughs> I, I watched I that guessed. on acid one night, and I thought it was <laughs> Actually, fucking incredible. I watched that, and it was the TV cut too, so it kept going to commercial like two o'clock in the morning, well, and I was in rapture. Yeah, one of the first times that I ever did uh, mushrooms. Uh, like it was like that four, like four, five o'clock in the morning, where you're sort of coming out of it, but not really. And somebody put on video drone that I'd never seen before, and that that like that will sear itself into your head if you're on the right medication. Video drone is a name of a uh, party that they have here at the SF Eagle. What a coincidence! It's like I set you up for like it, exactly. Like, it's like what so are we, sellouts? That's a, that's Did a, they pay that's us? That's a free plug. <laughs> Yeah, you guys also sponsored by Audible. What the fuck is this? <laughs> exactly. Do you, do you want to buy one of those beds that are on all those? Yeah, Casper. <laughs> Casper, Casper mattress. <laughs> fuck that shit. I'll sleep on a pile of my dirty laundry like a like man. Sleep on a mattress named after a dead kid. Yeah. Casper mattresses. It's like it's on every comedy podcast. It's like this is this mattress is like scientifically engineered. Yeah, a bunch of fucking losers who spent <laughs> all of their twenties and most of their thirties sleeping on a fucking futon you... are now suddenly bed connoisseurs because. Because, oh, the first free mattress I ever got that my parents didn't buy me. Oh, it's we fucking wonderful. Out how to get it into oh, a my back's all aligned. <laughs> like, fuck yourself and like fuck your free mattress. <laughs> I'll kill you if you ever come to my city. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's 
fantastic. <laughs> it's, like, it's, yeah. like <laughs> it's like I know. It's like I know. I have the thing biggest I've following at this bar. It's the best. <laughs> this place is awesome. It's, it's like I, I know as a comedian, you are like used to crying yourself asleep. So <laughs> the best way to cry yourself asleep is on a Casper mattress. <laughs> it's genetically, it's scientifically engineered to uh, deal with disappointment. <laughs> for the whole time you're asleep, you'll forget what a miserable failure you are. That's the Casper guarantee. Uh, I uh, speaking of like uh, smoking pot or like doing drugs and watching <laughs> movies. One of the reasons why I stopped smoking pot is because I was smoking pot and I watched the movie Time Cop with John Claude Goddamn, and, <laughs> and he thought this has got some really great ideas. In I it. kept like sitting up in the middle of the movie and going, this is one of the best movies I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and it turned and out it was Sudden Death with <laughs> <laughs> the, the hockey movie with John Cotton Van Damme. And it's like, like the third time I sat up, I was like, this is as good as Citizen Kane. <laughs> <laughs> and people were just like, you're stoned, dude. Knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. It's better than Citizen Kane. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Much better, dude. <laughs> Rosebud, are you kidding me? How about a roundhouse kick to the face? <laughs> All that boring shit in the middle where he's like, who am I? Blah, blah, blah. What am I? <laughs> Fuck you, Orson Welles. <laughs> Name Wells. me one other like movie where there's a Belgian time traveler <laughs> <laughs> who is also in law enforcement. <laughs> oh, uh, and uh, uh, peace out to everyone in uh, Belgium. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, our hearts go out. That's yeah. our tribute. You know what? Actually, when I heard about the Belgian attacks, I was like, where was Jean-Claude Goddamn? Yeah. yeah. Shit. <laughs> Fucking coward. Your Selfish. people are dying, and what are you doing? Huddled in a fucking bathroom with all of your money thinking about banging Kylie Minogue on the set of Street Fighter you fucking coward I was there in Brussels trying to fucking calm everyone down with mind-blowing comedy and I changed my profile picture to a Belgian work, waffle but... so I don't know what else I can do my arms exactly. are tied what have you done Jean-Claude wasn't there a, uh, a Monty Python sketch and Andrew I'm gonna go to you on this one <laughs> where they were trying to come up with a derogatory term for Belgians Oh yeah, they couldn't do it. Yeah, like, it was either. Couldn't think it, of anything worse like, than Belgian. It was either the waffles or the right, sprouts. The sprouts. <laughs> and then after that, I'm out. Oh yeah. wow, I can't believe that show was ever canceled. That's some fucking. <laughs> Lauren Michaels must have uh, been sweating bullets every goddamn Joe, night with Joe, gold like that being made cancel, across the pond. They don't cancel BBC shows. Oh. <laughs> I guess, like, the lead creators just die of cancer eventually. <laughs> oh! Oh, oh, shots fired! Oh! <laughs> uh, you can't... move, Eric Idle! <laughs> We're like Eric Idles. <laughs> Take that. Uh, was it Graham Chapman? Yeah, uh, Graham or, Chapman. Or, <laughs> uh, yes, Graham Chapman. Uh, he's the one who's dead? He's A the lot of dead. them are dead now, right? No, there's only, like, only uh, one is one. dead. Ah, well, good riddance. <laughs> One down, about what? A million more to go. I, I, I was gonna, I was gonna break the news to Joe that only one of them are dead. He was like disappointed. I wish it was Terry Gilliam. <laughs> <laughs> Stop making one. shitty movies and ruining fucking Heath Ledger's legacy. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's an American, isn't he? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah. like the shittiest member too. <laughs> That's why he didn't have much. any speaking role in uh, Holy Grail. He just hit the coconuts together. Twelve, uh, twelve he was monkeys. Just like an animator was guy. Like he was all right. Right. Brad Pitt and, and uh, what, what's his name? Uh, Bruce Willis saved that masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> not, not Madeline Stowe? Nah, not the, not the first time that's ever happened. Uh, they, they save every movie they're in. All right, well, I guess the show's about to start, so I guess we should wrap it up. We should probably right. set this up inside. Maybe, you know, no, 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 some audio no, 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 of no, no, terrible no, open no, mic comedians. No, we're, 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 done with you. we're done with you, man. Like, well, man, it was, it was great, man. I guess, like, uh, hit me up next time you randomly decide to do a podcast at a gay bar. I'm, I'm sure our pals will cross. That's happen at least You know, you know that's going to happen soon. Yeah. Um, I'm around. All right, Joe Gorman. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you. You're the man, Joe. Yeah, for you reluctantly are the having me like, on. You know, I give you a whole other shit that's all the time, but you are one of my favorite like comics. I know. Who never shows up. You're back, you're back on the board. Hey, for man, like, I show uh, up whenever I'm not guests. booked. <laughs> Every time I don't have something better, I'm there, baby. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's like we have this like beautiful relationship yeah. where you're like, hey, if I don't have anything better going, I'll, I'll, I'll go check, to your show. I'll check it out. <laughs> but if something better so presents it's, itself. It's like, that's comedy romance right there. <laughs> that's how it is, baby. Get used to it. If they release Have a new something episode worth going of uh, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, I can't do it. But <laughs> I'll totally hang out with you. But although it depends on what's on TV. Yeah. <laughs> it's Thursday. It's must-see tonight. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm staying in. The doctor is out. 
All right, uh, let's take a break. Yeah. And then we'll come yeah, back. Yeah, we'll take a quick one. All right. And, uh, Joe, thank you for being on the thank show. Thank you again. for having right. me. And I, I want you to, like, I know you have to go into your pre show routine. Yeah, I got to go do a line before I uh, <laughs> drop five minutes of fire at this open mic. <laughs> Does that help you? Yeah, getting that same Kinnison mindset. <laughs> <laughs> well, everything turned out well for him. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it's a fairy tale ending. So go out on top, baby. Ow, ow! <laughs> can I explain why most of your sets begin like driving a Corvette onto the stage right. with like beer cans falling out of it? And I never remove my sunglasses at any point. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, let's take a break and we'll come back. Joe, thank you. All right, thank you. And we'll be All back right. from the SFB. Club. All right, and we are back. I want to like thank Joe Gorman for coming and bringing the magic. <laughs> Just running through and screaming stuff and like uh, and running off. <laughs> he, he's that, great. That, that's the way he is. He's, that's he, right. He's like, he's like uh, this comedy bridge troll. <laughs> just kind of like yeah, comes up and yells at you, and then like takes off. The Tasmanian devil of comedy. Absolutely. Yeah. He, yeah. He's like five feet one of hurricane, <laughs> comedy right. hurricane, and he's like a, a class five hurricane, whatever <laughs> that means. And I think it's a uh, it's very unfair. I think when people refer to him as uh, Junior Joe Bartnick. Uh, because uh, he is, in fact, uh, little Jay Okerson. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, some like uh, that's some inside baseball comedy <laughs> talk right there. Um, oh, one of the things I saw him at, I didn't like bring it up to him. It's like uh, la- right before I went to Vegas, there was a Paco Romaine did this like uh, roast. Okay. Where it's like, you know, you, at usual roast, they, they uh, pick one person and they have a bunch of jackasses like make fun of that right. person. <laughs> Usually it's a, a well-known person. Yeah. <laughs> they don't just pick somebody off the street and decide and to if, insult them. And Paco's roast is that he like basically would pair up two comics and they would roast each other on stage oh. for like, I don't know, five or six minutes. Sure. And they and Joe Gorman got like paired up with uh, Drew Harmon. <laughs> so it was Harmon versus Gorman. The fucking, like, I, the I assume very little was held back on either of their parts. <laughs> it was the thriller and who cares. Of. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and uh, I, I, I actually didn't like stick around to see who won. I think I think Joe got the best of them, but I was just like, oh my god, these guys are such good friends. They're just gonna really fucking rip into each other. And the only problem with it is that they're such good friends that they're actually very polite with each other. Right. Right. Yeah. That's terrible. Uh, exactly. Because like, you, you want to see, like, a friendship end right there. <laughs> exactly. Like, I, like, I want. Like, what about that thing your sister, when your sister had an abortion? What? Why did you do <laughs> that? Like, yeah, I wanted somebody, like, <laughs> like, like, I, like, I know it's, like, you know, the whole thing is, like, this construct. Right. And, like, you're, like, oh, I'm going to make fun of you. Now you're going to make fun of me. Oh, oh, isn't that? Oh, that was cutting. All right. Of, but I wanted, like, someone to just, like, like really go, like, the Andy Kaufman route and just, like, start crying. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you said you'd never bring that up. <laughs> I told you that in confidence. Oh my god, I know we're on stage right now, but oh my <laughs> god, I I'm a human being with feelings. <laughs> uh, Fantastic. But I uh, I hope that Joe like uh, went on to like defeat everybody in like that fucking like rudeness battle. Right, right. Uh, but Andrew, do you have any plugs uh, before you like sign off from the? You know what? I don't think so. I've, I yeah you know, I've. Like I say, I, I, I've seen a, a, a couple of movies, but nothing that, like, you know, like the Pee Wee Herman movie was good and is worth seeing. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, nothing, like, nothing sticks out as, like, uh, being great. <laughs> All right, I said uh, I wasn't going to do this, but, like, I have a reverse plug. Oh, boy. My reverse plug is if, if you buy anything on, if you're like us and you like comedy and you buy anything from comedy film nerds, <laughs> let me tell you something. They... They only, you only have, like, one option right. that, uh, for shipping, and that option is two-day shipping. And I just want to let you know, those two days are not in a row. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, the day they get the order and the day they decide to ship it. Exactly. Two-day shipping. Right, exactly. It's like two-day shipping because, like, when I bought, like, because they overcharge like, you for shipping. Like, it's two-day shipping. We, we take about two days to get around to, like, sending it out UPS ground. That two, those two <laughs> days are, like, starting from whenever somebody gets off their ass to, like, actually <laughs> yeah, ship your exactly. thing. It's like, it's like when you order something, it's like, oh, it's going to be two-day shipping. It's like, oh, it's a little much, but at least I'll get it in, like, two or four days. Right. But it's like, no, no, no. It's two days from whenever they get around to it. <laughs> so it's like it's like that old joke where it's like, hey, you know, um, open 24 hours, but not in a row. Right. <laughs> it's like, um, so uh, that's my only, like, reverse plug. 
Uh, hopefully we'll have more uh, going on. Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm still enjoying Horace and Pete's. Oh, Louis yeah, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't, like, hit that up yet. It's pretty good. Like, it's, uh, it's, it's like, sort of half dramatic, half not. Like, yeah, it's, like, uh, it's fun. It's, like, it's like getting to watch, like, a interesting play every week. Okay, and, uh, well, actually, I do have a plug. I'm going to plug uh, Colin Holtz's Open My Comedy Night here at the SF Eagle on Wednesday nights. That sounds terrible. Like, what kind of what kind of uh, degenerates uh, uh, perform there? I mean, if you're... <laughs> If you're a uh, anthropologist and your speciality is like uh, perversion, then maybe you want to come down here. Pre-apocalypse. <laughs> like, what kind of people are destroying the world? <laughs> maybe you want to come down here and do some research. <laughs> there we go. But Colin Holtz, very funny guy, runs the com- comedy night here. Sweet. You can see comics up to and including Joe Gorm here. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, so, Andrew, what is your final analysis, Phil Juanu, of this bar? The you know what, like SF Eagle. We we like we've been here for a couple hours, and we've actually been in the in the back like patio, and the, the back patio is great. Like it's you know uh, it, yeah, it's, it's really well set up, and like uh, um, and even the inside of the place is like uh, is is fun and cool, and I I love it all. You and love it all. I can't wait to. You to, have anything to come bad back. to say? Uh, no, I don't. No. <laughs> I'm just like trying to egg you on. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know, like, <laughs> so you're the, I'm not really into the gay lifestyle. <laughs> part, yeah, <What>? exactly. <laughs> well, you know, all these people are hellbound, of course, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I love this bar. Uh, in fact, like right in my eyesight here, uh, there's a uh, fat flyer. Fat chihuahua? No, oh. they're, they're, it's not a fat chihuahua. It's a uh, flyer for Bone Coots. And I've okay, seen yeah. like many a good show here, uh, like in my lifetime. Right. And like apart yeah, the from the comedy night. <laughs> so, so, I mean, you know, aside from tonight, <laughs> although we haven't been inside to see it. Right. Uh, but like, yeah, like the, also one of the things we forgot to mention is that like if you like smoking, oh well, we didn't mention that like, if you like smoking copious amounts of weed, you can come here. <laughs> but like, if you like smoking anything, like I think that's why the comedians like coming here. In the patio, it's totally aired out. So like, yeah. it's and one like of I say, it's like near uh, two commercial buildings. So there's, it's very unlikely that uh, that this place is going to get shut down for a noise complaint. I know. Thank, thank God. And, and it's also it's a San Francisco staple. It is. You know, it's like this. This is a the age old uh, like yeah, bar in like South of the Market or Yeah, it's like this and the, the stud, right? The like, stud. Yeah. The rip the rip tie, the, 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 the rawhide. The rawhide the, <laughs> the jackhammer. The lonely sailor. <laughs> the <laughs> rusty soldier. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, you got yeah. anything else? <laughs> Shit covered dick. Oh, wait, that's a terrible bar. Well, uh, once again, if, if you've, like, made it this far through the podcast. Uh, <laughs> you get to hear me say shit, shit covered dick. <laughs> you get to hear that's a guarantee. The, that's uh, the podcast guarantee. Co- the code word to, to uh, collect your prize is shit covered dick. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and your prize is a shit covered dick. <laughs> exactly. And Andrew will uh, deliver on that <laughs> uh, right. whenever you come to San Francisco. That's right. Uh, so that's it. I think uh, I think we're good. Dude, I'm glad to, I'm yeah, glad to be good. back. Yeah, totally. Vegas, yeah. and uh, I'm glad to like be hanging out again. Uh, so uh, I think that's it. Like, uh, why don't we sign off? I'm Jeff Cleary. I am Andrew Lapp. And we'll see you next time on SF Barcast. This eagle's place is in the sky. She's still got a lot of flying to do. You can see it in her eye Though she's cried a bit for what we put her through She soared above the lifted lamp That guards sweet freedom's door In the dews, the damps, the watchfires Of a nation torn by war Oh, she's far too young to die You can see it In her eye, she's not yet begun to fly. It's time to let the mighty eagle soar once more. Let the eagle soar like she's never soared before. From Rocky Coast 
to golden shore Let the mighty eagle soar Soar with healing in her wings As the land beneath her sings Only God knows the mighty eagle soar. This country's far too young to die. She's still got a lot of climbing to do. And we, we can make it if we try. Built by toils and struggles God has led us through We've fought for freedom dear Both here and on the distant shore Paid a price, sacrifice A price you can't ignore Oh, we're far too young to die We can make it if we try We've not yet begun to fly it's time to let the mighty eagle soar once more let the eagle soar like she's never soared before from rocky coast to golden shore God, no other kings Let the mighty eagle soar Let the eagle soar Like she's never soared before From rocky coast to golden shore Let the mighty eagle soar Only God, no other kings Let the mighty eagle soar Thank you and God bless you.